This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. Trade Flow Capital Management celebrates five years of strong returns and SME success. To find out more, please visit www.tradeflow.capital. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices rose on Thursday as a surprise drop in U.S. crude stockpiles and the halt in exports from Iraq's Kurdistan region offset a smaller than expected cut to Russian supplies. Brent crude futures rose 40 cents, or 0.51 percent, to $78.68 a barrel at 0926 GMT, while West Texas intermediate crude rose 52 cents, or 0.71 percent, to $73.49 a barrel. U.S. crude oil stockpiles fell unexpectedly in the week to March 24 to a two-year low, the Energy Information Administration said on Wednesday. U.S. oil and gas activity stalled in the first quarter as production gains slowed and drillers' outlooks turned negative, according to a survey released on Wednesday by the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. The bank's activity index, which measures conditions among oil and gas firms across prime oil production portions of Texas, New Mexico and Louisiana, tumbled to 2.1 from 30.3 in the fourth quarter of 2022. Companies reported rising costs for a ninth straight quarter and said this year's weaker prices for oil and gas are hurting cash flow and profits. Overall, a company outlook index turned negative, falling 27 points to minus 14.1. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Britain set out plans to boost energy security and tackle emissions on Thursday, but critics said a lack of new investment and incentives meant it failed to provide any new boost for the country's green energy sector. Britain's net zero startups and renewable energy producers are waiting for the country to respond to the green subsidies offered by the US $369 billion Inflation Reduction Act IRA, but the government has said that will not come until the autumn. Energy Security Minister Grant Shapps said the 1000 pages of documents published on Thursday were focused on energy security, a major focus since the war in Ukraine. The European Union reached a provisional deal on Thursday on higher renewable energy targets, an important pillar of the bloc's plans to fight climate change and end dependence on Russian fossil fuels. Negotiators of the European Parliament and the Council, representing EU members, agreed that by 2030, the 27-country EU would commit to sourcing 42.5% of its energy from renewable sources like wind and solar, with a potential top up to 45%. The EU's current 2030 target is for a 32% renewable energy share. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. China's top copper smelters agreed on a lower guide price for treatment and refining charges, TCRCs, for copper concentrate processing in the second quarter of 2023 amid supply disruptions, three sources with knowledge of the matter said. The rates of $90 per tonne and 9.0 cents per pound were decided at a meeting of the China Smelters Purchase Team, CSPT, held on Thursday, the sources said. The new prices are lower than the guidance for the charges set at $93 per tonne and 9.3 cents per pound for the first quarter this year. Dalian iron ore futures were set for a fourth straight session of gains on Thursday, supported by the prospect of demand recovery after steel consumption was temporarily capped by rainy weather in many regions last week. The most traded May iron ore futures contract on the Dalian Commodity Exchange ended daytime trading 1.91% higher at 905 yuan and 50 fen, $131.64, a ton, posting a week-on-week -week gain of 4.8%. Similarly, on the Singapore Exchange, the most active May iron ore contract was 2.24% higher at $125.60 a ton as of 0907 GMT, recording a rise of 7.5% week on week. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Chicago wheat slid for the first time in five sessions on Thursday, although losses were limited by concerns over supplies from Russia as global grain trader Cargill said it would no longer handle the country's grain at its export terminal. Soybeans ticked lower, while corn firmed. 
The most active wheat contract on the Chicago Board of Trade, CBOT, fell 0.1% to $7.04 a bushel as of 0426 GMT. Soybeans lost half a cent to $14.76 minus three quarters a bushel and corn added quarter of a cent to $6.50 minus three quarters a bushel. That is all for today's news on commodity market. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.